This program is brought to you by Unique Touring Trailers, who keep our precious camera gear safe and dry as we travel the country. And Outback Supply Co, makers of Outback Rodeo jeans and quality Western wear. Cassie Ryan and welcome to a very special edition of Inside Rodeo. In tonight's episode, our team spent three days with 14-time Australian champion Shane Kenny. We caught up with Shane at Gympie while he was mustering his breeding stock before taking them to his hometown of Emerald for conditioning. Yeah, we've been down at Gympie um, last week and we uh gathered all the cattle in and we try to get down there sort of three times maybe four a year it just depends on the season and um, how everything's going um, obviously this year has been very dry and stuff but uh, we go down there and we keep all our uh, the old rope calves and stuff that we acquire over the years we buy them and whatever but we're sort of at the stage now where we don't need to um, purchase anymore but uh, we've got enough breeders and that but all the cows, all them that you see, they're all been um, to rodeos all across Australia from Darwin through to Mount Isaac, um, Concurry, to Room, Warwick, the national finals down the Gold Coast. Um, we get around quite a bit like in, uh, in Queensland and stuff, so, but um, yeah, they've got to see more countryside than most people, so, but uh, now they've been retired and they're just down there um, living the life and breeding radio stock for us. So. Um, the boys had to gimpy to do the mustering. Um, kids and I were pretty disappointed that we couldn't get to go this year but um, yeah we're left at home and left to keep the home fires burning. Um, it wasn't a great trip when they went this time. We had a horse went down with colic and we ended up at the vets and but you know at the end of the day we've we, Shane and I have both got the same goal, like we want we want success with our longhorns and our beef cattle down there and you know, they're part of our everyday life so I mean it's just something that they've got to do. They no doubt have a great time while they're down there without a thaw but... Yeah when we go down there to Gympie I mean it's it's fun. Any time that you get to do that sort of stuff. Uh, I haven't really been down there a whole lot. I've been away in the States. Uh, pretty much since they've had it, I guess you'd say. I think that's the third time I've been down there. Um, I've been there once before. This time I spent my 17th birthday there. Um, had quite a bit of fun, a bit of a joke around and stuff, and got a heap of cattle in. And I suppose the best part of it about it is now, it's like Shane said, get back here now and we get to rope them and break them in and, and get them ready for the national finals in May. Yeah, well, Dale and Leanne, they they were in um, partnership with us down there, and uh, Campbell, he he um, lives there with us. He's got left school last year and come to hang out and do an apprenticeship. I call it. I, I kind of did it. I um, went and stayed with Neville McCarthy and learned to rope and just had a rodeo and train horses and just yeah, everything in general um, with him and and uh, Campbell's kind of just going around the same way, I guess. So yeah. And uh, my brother was down there. He um, just come back from America. He's been over there competing. Uh, he sort of spent the last, I guess, best parts of three to four years up backwards and forwards over there. He um, just back getting ready for the finals to see if he can win his first Australian title, hopefully. So yeah. Shane had a fairly abusive phone call about this wild cow that had been chasing somebody's grandmother or something down there and been annoying everybody so we, were, we went down and found she was in a, about another eight or nine head of cows and a couple of calves uh, yeah she was supposed to be a wild thing we walked them down the road and put them in a in a little pen there and <laughs> borrowed that ute off a guy and went up and loaded her and when I opened the gate she was the first one to walk out of the 
all the other cows and pretty much loaded herself straight up the race and onto that little vehicle and quite sure if you've seen how big she was most most cattle would not walk in there <laughs> if they were wild so but yeah we just had to go and get her and get her out of people's hair and bring her back and put her with the other cattle that was pretty much all that was I'm sure that Shane and Leanne bought her off another guy that actually breeds some longhorns just down the road here and she's probably been around since she was or oh, wouldn't have been 12 months old she's probably a six seven year old cow now uh, she was a team rope and steer or a heifer cow went to a lot of rodeos a lot of people won good money on her so she's been handled a lot she doesn't really get in anybody's way we, uh, we have like a draft pound and it's got five different ways we can draft so that way um, you can you know you put the calves out one way and the dry cows and the steers and everything because we have a little bit of trouble down there we got because it's in the national parks and it's actually where the Gympie Country Music Festival is um, we have quite a few tourists and whatever else go out there motorbike riders and the gates are always left open so they kind of get boxed and everything lives together which is it's no big deal to us like we just we're used to it now but um, yeah, when we get them back in, we, we try to um, keep them all separated and we'll put them back out into their own paddocks because there's some paddocks that are better for the cows and some are better for the steers and, um, the, you know, the, the young rodeo stock that we take back down that we want them to be sort of there. And So, yeah, the, the draft pound, it, um, it's just so that when they come in, it's kind of stress-free, I guess, easier to be able to um, cut one out and... Um, put them in their in their right area where they need to be. I guess yeah, you handle them a little bit more and they're nice and quiet and yeah, it makes makes it better. Quite funny when we go down there. A lot of the cows, you know, we know that there's a little black and white cow there that I missed at Mount Isa in 2006 to win the rodeo. I sort of it was none of her fault and yeah, every time I see her, it reminds me of it. But uh, um, there was ones that I've tied, it was a couple of cow, cows, well, they're cows now, I tied in uh, seven, or 7.25 at, in at, uh, Emerald here at my hometown rodeo, so it was, I actually thought it was going to be six for the first time in my life, which is a big thing, um, they tie them in six in America, and Australian record 7.2, but uh, I actually thought I had it broke that day, but we've still got that cow down there, and I um, get a kick out of telling Campbell and that, I tied that cow in seven, or I won this rodeo on that cow, or um, I said to Dale, his wife, I said, your wife won uh, Emerald Rodeo on that cow there and he's like, must have been a while ago, she hasn't been winning too much lately, so <laughs> I said, well, we won't put that on TV, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people do get fortunate enough to do that stuff every day for work and that's how they make their living. They get to be on a horse all day, ride around behind cows, they probably don't think it's that great, but when you don't get to do it and then you get the chance to be able to go down there and be around cattle and horses and watch young horses learn their way through the hills and all those sort of things. Uh, watch other people work in cattle and learn stuff off them. Learn what to do and what not to do and I mean it's just how can it get any better than that? A lot of people think that the, the animals and that that we use um, you know they get mistreated and that but that's more from far from the truth because uh, they're part of the family as, as you know as much as our horses and we get the joy of seeing them grow up and and uh, then we get to turn them out and let them go and live down in the hills and live the life of luxury down there and you know drink the clearest water you want to drink out of the mountains and and uh, poke around in the trees and lay about and just enjoy life so yeah it's it's always a big part of what we do. After the break, we head out to Emerald to meet with the rest of the Kenny family. Hi, we're, we're the, the Kenny, Kenny family, family. You're and you're watching Inside Radio. Radio. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, it's a clincher. 
the new Outback Western gear. It's the gear for us. Take the shirts, for instance. Extra length in the sleeve. A little bit of extra underneath the arms. Let's you reach out with your reins. And the new jeans, well, they've got that little bit of extra hip and thigh. And if you ask for a 31 waist, you get a 31 waist. I totally endorse it. See you later. With the Gympie herd drafted, Shane, Casey and Campbell took the stock up to Emerald for conditioning. To condition the calves, what we do is we just um, we run them all through the race, and then they have the uh, arena gate open, the catch pan gate we call it, down the other end, and there's um, water troughs and and hay and stuff down there, so they learn to, to go down there and they can have something to drink and eat, and and we'll give them a rest, and then we'll bring them back and just run them through again, and sort of do that three or four times, just so that they know where they're going and they're not running around silly and, and um, not knowing what's going on, it's just to ease them into it. Um, with the rope and steers we put the protective horn wraps on them so the ropes don't hurt their horns and the same thing we uh, run them through the, the strip and shoot there and they uh, go up that deal there so we can take our ropes off them uh, with, with a bit more ease and they're on feed and water when they get down the other end and then we bring them back up and uh, and run them through again and just go through the same process so that it's uh, they're not running around and just makes it so much easier and they're more content and it's less stress on the animals when we're um, using them. Shane's been very successful in rodeo. He's 14 times all round Australian champion. He's pretty, um, he's quiet about the fact that he is it, but he's very passionate about what he does. I guess ever since I can remember, like, uh with Shane, you know, growing up, he's 10 years older than I am. He's always kind of been, as a kid, he was a winner. First time that I ever really remember, whenever we'd go to a rodeo, Shane would be coming home with a check. So that's a pretty good thing to have. Um, Mum and Dad, Dad was the same way. It doesn't matter where you go, as far as being a cowboy and competing in the arena, there's probably not much more of a fierce competitor than Shane. I'm sure to a lot of people he can tend to be, probably be a little bit intimidating when it comes time to turn on the volume. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, those are the type of people that you want to hang around and be associated with if you want to win because it rubs off. Uh, if you hang around with winners, and eventually you're going to become a winner. Probably about two and a half years ago, I first I went to a, come to a rodeo down here at Nearby, I think it was, and I went there and I was only junior breakaway and then, and I seen him and really wanted to meet him and I ride in the box and have a look around, come up and introduced himself and had a good talk and that for me was just. Gold. I've dreamed about uh, as a little kid of this opportunity. I was very fortunate and I went home and a couple months later I had a, just got my new phone for my birthday and I had a message on my phone, Shane Kenny. I said, next school holidays you want to come down and roast some calves. And um, to me that that was all I wanted to do and I till that day I was that happy and excited to come down and just about every school holidays till about this time last year. Come down and spend the school holidays with Shane Lee and roping and doing a couple of rodeos with him and then I'd head back home and <laughs> count down to the next school holidays I suppose. But I've been really lucky to have this opportunity. I mean I finished school last year, come down to Shane Leanne's and I was here for two weeks and I was meant to be going back to another rodeo and Shane said, what are you doing here? You might as well stay. If you're going to stay and do it properly, you might as well stay here or go home. Go on the phone to mum, she said, well, if that's what you want to do, you might as well stay down there. So, spend as much time here as I can and 
best thing about Shane Leanne is they've got the horsepower behind me. As far as I'm concerned, they've got the best horses in the country at the moment. Um, they give me the best opportunity to win. And at the same time, knowing that Shane is behind me in anything I do, to help me there if I'm lucky, like explained before. Sometimes you are doubting yourself that when you go through, you can't feel like you can't win. He's always there because he's been through all that. And I mean, everyone sees him as the king of the cowboys, I suppose. Shane Kenny, he is uh, the nine times Australian all-round champion cowboy. That holds a world record. This cowboy is a Queensland-based cowboy. Lives and lives and works in Emerald in Queensland. And I tell you what, does it like there is no tomorrow. Lives in Emerald is a jewel in the rodeo circuit around Australia. Four and a half seconds flat. Well, a great time there from Shane Kenny. Have a look at this. This cowboy has done this so many times. It is like sitting on his grandmother's rocking chair. Rodeo is just part of our lifestyle. Um, we pack up and head to the rodeos, but it's very a family sport for us. The kids like to be involved in it, and it's probably not as important to me as it was. It's still fairly important to Shane to compete at the rodeos, but it's probably my second second passion now because the kids are so much part of our lives that I tend to stay home a little bit because they need to be at school. They actually like going to the rodeos as well and like to compete and. They're at the stage of their life that they want to be going. They're fairly social. Yeah, my wife Leanne, she uh, has the hard job of staying like home, and while well, I go away working, or if I go uh, down to Gympie, we've been mustering. And we did a couple of rodeos down Victoria and stuff. The last few weeks we've been busy, so she's been back here looking after the kids and getting them to schools. She had uh, a good bar race and horse. It was actually my rope horse, but she stole it. But anyway. Um, a good bar racing horse, uh, he um, sustained an injury probably sort of going on two years ago and we've been battling with that a little bit and we've just started to um, get him back on track now hopefully and uh, hopefully Alyssa will be able to com start competing on him and um, if he shapes up a little bit Leanne may run him at the better rodeos where the, the ground's quite good and stuff. But When we when we practice the kids like to be involved with us practicing. They they run a lot of the cattle up. When Shane's at work, um, if he's on night shift, we have Campbell living with us now, so he um, he's a big help and I don't have to do as much as I used to do um, around, the, around the place. But when we practice, the kids like to run the cattle up. They like to be part of it all. There's a lot of other things to do other than practice. We don't get to practice every day. I don't get to practice as much as I'd like these days because of the kids. You know, they, they're happy to help feed up. They're happy to or well, we've got water problems, they're happy to just yeah, be part of what we do every day. The boys, they get out and want to ride potties and ride their horses and they all get out and rope and they've got the goat and of an afternoon I'll come home from work and they'll all be fighting because this one won or they shouldn't have won and they, they should have been disqualified, <laughs> they're, they're quite competitive about it which which is, yeah, it's, they, they have fun so it's a good thing about it all. But, um, the kids are the kids are very involved in rodeo. Alyssa, she's um, she's probably just about to step onto my good bar racing horse that got hurt a couple of years ago, and he had surgery in September, so he's only actually coming back these couple of weeks now, and she'll probably do a first rodeo in him in, on a on him in a fortnight. I hope that I'll get to ride him a couple of times this year. But Tyler, he the our middle fella, he um, he he likes to make sure the arena's right. He he likes to be the tractor man, and the surface has got to be good and he started to ride a little bit, he's a bit wild, but he gets it done and he's wanting to start roping calves and he's not a keen bar racer. And then the little fella, well, he's into everything, like there's not much that doesn't stop him. Boys both do a bit of potty riding. Jaden's um, very confident in what he does. He he just likes to go flat all the time on his horse. But um, yeah, I think I think the boys will both grow up to be ropers. But I think Jaden is 
probably very much like Shane. Um, I think he's probably got it to go all the way as well. As If they're happy to do it, that's fine, but we don't really push them to do it. That It's up to them what they like to do. Kind of not as agile as it used to be, but it's just knowing how to win and, and uh, having that right mind and just going and being able to do the job, you take it for granted sometimes. And, and when you, you know, you're having a bit of trouble and you're struggling to compete and to win and stuff, it, it, it makes you question yourself and, and um, fight with yourself. And then when all of a sudden, when it clicks back around, it's like, well. Oh. Righto, come across there, get it on. Here we go, here we go. We've got a leaderboard change happening here. If we stand in spinning, tying down. Pick and string on the front, rack up the two hind and get out of there. One, two, three, ladies and gentlemen, how about it? Put your hands together, Shane Kenny. Yeah, uh, my sponsors have been with Ariat for about 19, 20 years, I guess. Um, we've had a few new guys come on, uh, the M Group, they're the local tyre crew. We uh, travel a lot of miles and burn some tyres up and give us fuel cards and all that sort of stuff to try and get us down the road. And We've had uh, Fodder Solutions, that we've had them for a few years now, that's the, the barley sprouts, we feed them to all our stock. Yeah, we've got uh, Diamond Wool Pads, they're saddled. Um, blanket. They've come on board and they've been a, a big thing in uh, rodeo in Australia just the last few years. You know, they're, they're a really good product and they're, um, they're a great saddle blanket. And, and uh, we just had a new high gain uh, horse feed, which is a grain, a grain supplement mix, and they do um, joint formulas and all that sort of thing. We've um, had them come on board. Uh, we've got Air yeah, Talk Cow and um, ECR. He's a horse chiropractor and it's a really hard thing like nowadays with the price of fuel and the cost of pretty much everything and rodeos are run um, a lot of the times for charity and yeah it's a, it's a big circle you know so it's it's kind of all hard but um, any any time you can get good sponsors and people to help you out like it just makes it a little bit easier and it's, it's always much appreciated. Next month on Inside Rodeo, we'll bring you all the action from the APRA National Finals Rodeo in Caboolture. See you then. <laughs>